now it's time to start shaping. We're gonna uh, talk about the process of feeling your way to a more precise shape. And it's a little difficult to explain, um, you know, cause it's not math. It's not a two plus two is four. There's practice and understanding of the concept is really important. So I'm gonna see if I can explain, like, let's imagine that um, you have been biking. You did a hundred miles yesterday and um, you come home and you came home and you collapsed. You drank a gallon of Gatorade and you woke up at 2 a.m. with a cramp because you still didn't get enough magnesium and now you've got to go to the bathroom so bad you can't stand it. And so you're hobbling down the hall from your bed to the toilet and you did it in the dark. Or maybe there was a night light, but it wasn't enough light. How did you do that? How did you get from one place to another without really being able to see? Well, you, you felt your way, sort of. Mostly it was memory. You knew what the room looked like. You knew the shape of the hallway. You knew the shape of the curve. You knew how to step over the clothes you dropped on the floor last night because you remembered they were there. Um, even in that uh, situation of great pain, because you have a cramp and you've got to go to the bathroom, your memory still works. You've still got that muscle memory of making that path that you've made a hundred times and you know how to get there. And, but it's it's all feel it's muscle memory and it's visual memory even though you can't see you're still visualizing where it is you're going and it's similar to that when you're trying to to shape a sculpture like um i, I will look for example down here at where the drum leg um, drumstick should be coming out of the torso of the eagle and i'm remembering pictures that I've seen of the bone structure of an eagle and where that shoulder is and how it's going to pivot out from the body and I look at that and I think ah, I'm not really that happy with it he's probably not a standing eagle because I would need the drumstick sticking out further so he's going to be mostly perched but I'm going to put him at least I'm going to try standing on a snake so he's partially perched partially forward and that will allow me to get his drumstick in the right angle and this is all just because I've looked at a lot of pictures looked at a lot of pictures of eagles to figure out exactly what what did they look like when they're in that position how do they move so I've, I'm working off of this memory even though I can't see it and so it's kind of like drawing by removing what shouldn't be there and then the other step in the process is, is I keep looking at the, a picture. And I look at this picture and I look maybe particularly at the neck. I say, hmm, look at that. It's two and a half, three inches long because I made this picture the exact height of this sculpture. And I say, it tapers out. So it's thicker at the bottom than it is at the top, but it's pretty tall. And so I look back over here at my sculpture and I go, hmm. Houston, we have a problem. And I look at the size of the neck here from the bottom of the beak down. So bottom of the beak down, my neck should come down to about here. So I say, okay, so then I need to, I need to take some of this shoulder off. So I'll get my angle grinder and maybe a, a 36 grit or 60 grit. And since I'm at this point and just start working that shoulder and making sure that it's tapered but that I've lowered the tops of the wings so that I can look back at the picture and go, oh, okay, yeah, now, now I'm pretty good. I've lowered the shoulders, the chest, essentially, so that my neck is longer and can taper out, and then the tops of the wings will start a little further down after that. And in, in that process, I may look back at the picture a dozen times. I'll work it, I'll work it a little bit, and then I'll stop and look, and I'll back up. Sometimes I might change angle and look at it from another direction until it starts to look more like the picture or more like the picture in my mind. A lot of times I don't have a picture that's in this position. This bird is sitting with his um, claws like this. 
So one shoulder is actually higher than the other, and that's not what's happening here. So I have to imagine if he were sitting level, gripping something, you know, partially mashing it to the top of what's going to be a rock here. He's mashing this snake to the top of the rock and trying to hang on at the same time. So he's going to be a little leaned forward, perhaps, not quite sitting up, uh, or not quite perched, but not sitting up either. He's going to be kind of in this position in my imagination. Whether this is real in nature or not, this is my imagination. And so that's how I'm going to work that, the angle of that leg in that situation. So you look back and forth, you make adjustments, you change your angle, you remember what did it look like in the pictures. Maybe I need more pictures. Sometimes I'll actually even stop and I'll go pull up some pictures of the skeleton of whatever I'm looking at. And I'll say skeleton of an eagle, I'll type that in. And then I'll study the bones and I'll look where the shoulder's supposed to be. And oh, yikes, I'm looking at my sculpture and thinking, that's not physically possible. Poor guy can't do that because his bones don't work like that. So then I have to make some adjustments. So that's the basic uh, philosophy behind moving forward at this point. I've done most of the blocking with the saw. And uh, here shortly, I have a dime tip bar coming in the mail from uh, Canon that I got from uh, sawnuts.com. Um, thank you to, uh, I think his name is Bob King. And um, I'll be able to, with that dime tip bar, do a lot of what I'm about to do with the angle grinder because the tip on it is literally the size of a dime. The chain is rolling over about what my thumb is. And so I'll be able to do a lot more detail work with that. I'm very excited to get to practicing with that. Um, but today I don't have it and I'm gonna be using the angle grinder to continue to move forward on this eagle.